Today, I'm gonna to be reviewing the IdeaPad 5 Pro 16 for 2024. I put a poll out about which laptops you would like me to review, something I'm going to be regularly doing. Anyway, this one came in dead last, so I thought I'd completely ignore you guys. But in all seriousness, I actually really like this laptop and I think it might be one of the most underrated out there. So today, I'm gonna to tell you why this laptop is so special and some of the drawbacks that you must be aware of before buying one. All right. Here's the skinny. The IdeaPad 5 Pro is the equivalent of eating at a nice hotel buffet. Pretty much everything is there and it is good, but nothing is amazing. To get amazing, you'd wanna to go to a specialist restaurant instead. But when you consider what you're getting for the price you've paid, the buffet wins in value. So let's translate this into laptop speak. For an MSRP of around 1,100 US dollars, you get one of Intel or AMD's latest processors. You get a dedicated NVIDIA RTX 3050, a 16 inch high resolution display, 16 gig of memory and 512 gig of storage. And it's all packed into a quality Lenovo chassis that's reasonably compact and portable. Plus at the time of this video, you can upgrade the AMD model to an RTX 4050 for just $70. I bought our model when it was released, and at that time only the Intel version was available, so the Core Ultra 5 is what I have. In this chassis though, Lenovo really makes it sing. In fact, this Core Ultra 5 in this laptop performed very well compared to many Core Ultra 7 laptops that we've tested. That is likely because Lenovo is feeding it a ton of power. But before you go out and buy the Intel version, we recently tested both Intel and AMD's latest processors in an identical laptop, a ZenBook 14. The AMD one was hands down the better processor. It delivered more performance and it was more power efficient, which resulted in better battery life. So even though this Intel processor performs very well in this laptop, unless your specific applications perform better on Intel, I'd get the AMD variant. An example of this, by the way, is Adobe's Premiere Pro. It still seems to perform much better with an Intel CPU. Back to the IdeaPad 5 Pro though. Just like the CPU, Lenovo feeds its dedicated RTX 3050 a ton of power. That makes this RTX 3050 perform better than some RTX 4050s in laptops that don't feed their graphics that much power, like Dell's new XPS 14. I played a round of League of Legends at the screen's native 2560 by 1600 resolution with everything set to highest and I was able to comfortably max out the 120 hertz refresh rate. Now, with all this power comes great responsibility and Lenovo are being responsible here. The heat and fan noise is surprisingly good. When the processor is under max load, the keyboard deck gets warm, but only to 39 degrees Celsius, and the fan noise hits 49 decibels. That is really good. And in light use, the laptop is dead silent and it only feels a tiny bit warm. If you do hold the laptop up to your ear, yes, you will hear the fans going, but when it's on a desk, you can't. On battery, this laptop maintains its excellent max CPU performance, but that means even with this laptop's large 84 watt hour battery, you'll drain it fast if you're doing performance tasks while unplugged. That being said, if all you're doing is something light like taking notes or watching a movie, it does give you good run times. But the good doesn't end there. The chassis is quite well built with minimal screen flex and the keyboard deck feels rigid. Its bezels around the screen are thin, making it look modern. In fact, the laptop itself is surprisingly thin given the hardware inside. This makes it very portable for what it is. The keyboard is very comfortable to type on and it has a standard layout, so no issues of mispressing keys here. It does have a number pad which causes the keyboard to be off center. I personally don't have issues with that, but some of you might. Also, if you like to use Microsoft's AI Copilot, there is a dedicated button for it. That's where the right control key would have normally been. Finally, this laptop has Windows Hello facial recognition to get you logged in fast. That is a lot of good stuff. So here's the gotchas that you need to know before you run out and buy one. All right, there are two displays available. Just like the buffet that I mentioned earlier, both are okay, but neither are great. My model came with a 2560 by 1600 IPS matte panel. On the surface, it looks decent enough, but it's not that bright at 370 nits. Its colors also aren't accurate enough for professional color work. The other display has a lower 2048 by 1280 resolution. Spread across a large 16 inch panel, many people who look at small text all day, like me, will find that this just doesn't provide enough clarity and definition. That panel though is an OLED one that is brighter and has substantially better color accuracy. If you're wondering which of the two that I choose, it's this one, the 2560 by 1600 panel. But right now, unfortunately in the USA, that panel is only available with the Intel processor. The ports, while plentiful, have slow USB transfer speeds. They are all five gigabits and the SD card reader is slow too. USB-C charging is supported though. 
Let's talk about the speakers. They do not have any bass, and when I say that, it's like the entire bass has been completely deleted from the music. It's a pity, as the rest of the speakers are pretty good. They get really loud, and using Lenovo's Vantage software, you can get a nice immersive soundstage. The trackpad works very well for a laptop at this price point, but the click is loud. The webcam on this laptop is really bad. I mean, folks, colours are way off. Finally, the memory is soldered. And at the time of this review, at least in the USA, you could only buy it with 16 gigs. So, as you can see, this IdeaPad 5 Pro 16 for 2024 is a great laptop for the price, particularly if you're someone like me who crosses use cases. I program on my laptops, which in my case require CPU performance. I game on my laptop, which requires GPU performance. I video edit, and I like a large screen for that. And I move around a lot, so I want something portable. This laptop gives me a good amount of everything. However, if your only use case is one thing, such as gaming, you will do better if you buy a dedicated gaming laptop instead. And we've frequently seen laptops with much more powerful RTX 4060s fall into this price range. Now. If this IdeaPad 5 Pro goes on sale and drops below $1,000, then it becomes a must-buy. And if you're looking to find the cheapest price on all the laptops that we recommend, check out our new website. We list all our favourite laptops there for various types of use cases, as well as where to go to get the best deals on them. I want to end this video a little differently. Throughout my time using the IdeaPad 5 Pro 16, I regularly found myself uttering the following. I love this laptop, and if I was shopping at around $1,000, it is the one that I would personally buy. Ladies and gentlemen, in 200 plus laptop review videos, it's pretty rare that I say that. Josh out.